All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you, elect, across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. I'm the priest, Shar, from the Great Millstone Dallas branch, coming at you all with another lesson through the Spirit. And Lord's will, this lesson here is edifying unto the flock. Yesterday, we had class and uh, a few of us had touched upon a subject. Uh, this is actually a live show we did that was led by the elder brother in our camp, Ariala. And we was touching up on being circumspect, especially in these times now. All right. We need to be more circumspect now than we've ever been because we definitely see the plot of our overthrowing at hand. All right. We definitely see that. We see this beast in complete action. We see their agenda to come against you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. As the scriptures say was to take place, we see Jacob's trouble definitely at the forefront. And we see these demons, these devils, using um, the using the Maxine Waters, the jab, uh, uh, what, what is it called? Um, we always say it, um, Crown Royal 19 as um, one of the catalysts to bring in this new world order and we see also how it's on the spirit of these jakes through this witchcraft and this media that you see on tv a lot of these is a lot of these israelites that are out here are being enchanted all right they're being put under this spell to go out and um take this concoction and not only to take it but to push it on our people and they're actually putting it in the churches now they're advertising it saying that if you love your neighbor if you love god you would take this juice you would take this concoction so it would behoove us that like we was talking about yesterday to really consider this and to be circumspect and be mindful of how we conduct ourselves outside of um outside of the highways as we're in the world i should say and it's going to come to the point where people that you know people that um you thought might have cared about you in a sense where well, they're going to turn their back on you. Just like they turned their back on our Lord, Yahweh Shai. It's coming to a point where they're even going to exceed taking their back on you, turning their back on you. And they're going to go into uh, selling you out. They're going to sell you out for pay for whatever the case is. And we're just in those times right now. All right. So I wanted to start this lesson off here in the book of John, the 16th chapter. And I'm going to just uh, start from the top, because as we go into the scriptures saying offenses must come, this is part of it. It can somewhat be annoying, not even somewhat, it can be annoying, it's vexing when you see these Israelites in that spirit, seeing them join league with the beast, seeing them join league with Satan openly, and it's vexing to see. But at the same time, the bigger, the bigger part of the picture is this is all written by the Heavenly Father. And these things must come to pass in order for us to receive our glory as our Lord Yahweh Shai received his glory. All right. This is John 16 and 1. These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. And they did that back then with those disciples. All right. They got put out the synagogues. They got people that um, sold them out. And a lot of those disciples was cast into prison. All right. Almost all of them was put to death except for John the Baptist. I'm sorry, not John the Baptist. Forgive me. John the Revelator, who died later on in old age in the island of Patmos. So we're coming to a point now where we might not necessarily get put out to synagogues. All right. But our your jobs are going to require you to to um to comply with the beast. And they're going to openly see if you don't uh, comply with them, they're going to they're going to fire you. Or you're going to have to quit openly, coming to a point where you're not going to be able to go into these grocery stores, go into these places of business that you are used to doing. All right. Because they see that you are not in league with this beast. OK, so that division, even our Lord Yahweh Shai said it going into in Luke, the 12th chapter, how he comes to bring division. This is all part of the division. Us being completely separated from this world is part of that division. That our Lord Yahweh Shai was talking about. It goes a lot more than just your family members being divided against each other. But it's literally you being divided from this worldly way. All right. And it's going to come to a point where we're going to have to completely 
detached from this place completely. All right. We're detached in a sense, uh, not even in a sense, but we're detached because we're not in the world no more. But it's going to come to the point here very soon where we're going to have to completely be detached and trust in Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai 100% and believe that we will be sustained. All right. It's only so much rice you can buy and accumulate, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to get you out of a troublesome situation. You had all this rice, but they cut off the water. How the hell are you going to cook that rice? It's going to come to a point where we are going to have to fully trust in the Lord and expect a miracle. Because this is the time that we're coming into. This is back in John 16 and 2. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth the most high a service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the father nor me. So when it comes to people that we know, relatives of the Israelites that are out here that are with what's going on right now, not crying out, not speaking against it. The spirit's going to come upon these people to want us to either be put to death, to kill us personally, or to sell us out to these different judges, magistrates and such. We're coming into that time and they're going to do it thinking that they're doing the most high favor. It wasn't an accident. This was all strategically planned by the left hand for them to. I'm using the juice as an example. All right. But um, remember, um, Vice President Kamala Harris made that statement saying that if you love your neighbor, you would roll your sleeve up and get the waters, get the juice. So they're putting it in the name of God and they're putting it in the name of loving your neighbor. And that is part of the witchcraft magic that's getting put on these Israelites out here. So now they're going to look at it like it's OK. It's the godly thing to do. So with these people in their minds thinking that it's the godly thing to do and these people that are against their agenda, they're putting the finger at them saying they're ungodly. They want to kill everybody. These are the people that are destroying the population because they don't want to roll their sleeve up. What do you think they're going to want to do? All right. They're going to want you to get put to death. Some of them are going to want you to just get. And if you don't do it, they're going to sell you out. We're coming into those times where relatives and friends and people that, you know, are going to want to are going to want you offered up to these to these higher ups. We're in that time right now. And that's what we was talking about in the lesson that we did yesterday going into being circumspect. Being circumspect about who you're talking about it with, that's your job, who you engage with. But it's really best to be quiet. Obviously, you know, you don't want to just randomly change how you were. If you had associates or co-workers you were cool with, be cool. But be cool at a distance. The scriptures even goes into having friends of mammon. So it ain't like you just completely just, just isolate yourself. All right? But you don't want to just... Give out the facade and personification that you're just this this person that just knows all this and you're just this smart. You know, play it dumb, dumb it down like Lupe said, man, because these people are going to want to kill you, especially since they see that you are a complete opposite wavelength and vibration than they're at. We're in these times right now. That's why we got to be prudent because these people are going to want to offer us up. And again, as I just read, they think that they're doing the most high favor when they have you offered up, or when they have you put to death, all right? They're doing all this in the name of God, all this in the name of love your neighbor, okay? To the point where you can't even trust family members, mother, you know, father, mother, brother, sister. Can't trust these people. If they ain't in the truth, you can't trust them. That's just what it boils down to. It's the book of Micah, the seventh chapter, and I brought this precept out in a lesson that we did uh, yesterday. This is the book of Micah, chapter 7, verse 5. It says, Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. And her that lieth in your bosom is even your wife. All right. Now, granted, you know, you got women that are out there that believe this doesn't apply to you. But a lot of a lot of you brothers, especially you newer guys that are coming in, you have your, your woman is a demon. And that's just the truth of the matter. And we're in a time right now where a lot of darkness is being brought out to light and a lot of things are being exposed. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're, we're coming to a time right now where even brothers, women that are in the truth, they're, they're being exposed for not really believing in your testimony. We're not going to really have that acknowledgement when it comes that, 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 that acknowledgement when it comes to these women. And we're not going to have that until the society collapses and they really look at you like, dang, yo, I need you. 
All right. Until that day, man, your woman is going to she's not going to agree with you 100 percent. And a lot of you brothers, women are, are, are just going to be demons, man. Uh, I forgot what brother did it, but uh, there was a brother that did a lesson yesterday going into how a lot of our wives ain't going to make it. And he had that picture in the background of that pillar of salt using the example of Lot's wife. But a lot of our wives ain't going to make it. All right. So even when it comes to the woman that's in your bosom, the woman that you come home to every day, if she don't fully believe in this truth, that is doctrine, keep it simple. Keep it simple. All right. Now, I don't have a woman, so I'm not just speaking on just um, experience of me having a woman in the truth because I've never had a woman while I've been in the truth. All right. I prefer to just stick alone. You know what I'm saying? I prefer to just be on, be on my own. That's just myself personally. But I can say off the experience of reading the scriptures and understanding and the, the scriptures. And if your wife isn't on your wavelength, keep it simple. If she don't believe in this doctrine, don't try to teach her. Don't try to teach her all the time. She's going to have to learn just by your leadership and by your example. All right. So that's why it says, trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Especially since we understand that she is the weaker vessel. And a lot of brothers that end up getting put in jail. All right. Contrary to popular belief, I'm going to just say it. A lot of it's going to be due to your woman selling you out because she's going to want to openly comply with the beast. And she's going to see that you're not going to do it. And, and, and now there's a division that's right there. And now you have a seed that's right there. She wants the seed to be complied with the beast. You don't. So in her eyes, she's going to look at it for the children's sake. You know, he has to go to jail. He's crazy. All these things are getting ready to take place. And then again, they're going to think they're doing the most high a favor. But they're not. The God that they're doing it a favor for is the God that they serve, which is Satan. Okay. This is Micah 7 and 6. For the son dishonoreth the father. The daughter rises up against the mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. All right. And we had talked about this um, yesterday. And I even did a lesson on this a few months back, going into your family members even selling you out. This is the division that Yahweh Shai was talking about. This is one variation and aspect, I should rather say, of the division that our Lord Yahweh Shai was talking about. All right, your relatives coming against you, your wife, your loved ones. All right, this is the this is the time that we're in, and you even read about the account in Mark, where Yahweh Shai was doing those miracles, when he was performing those miracles. Matter of fact, let's get this example, because the scriptures say, "Trust not in the friend," right here, right? Even Yahweh Shai's friends came up against him. All right, this is the book of Mark, the third chapter. And I'm going to start at verse 20. It says, And the multitude came, Salakia, and the multitude come together again, so that they could not much as eat bread. And when his friends heard of it, now mind you, Yahweh Shai was doing all these miracles, and, and when Yahweh Shai and his men wanted to sit down and, and chill for a minute and eat some bread, there was so many people that were seeing the miracles and works that he was doing. They, they, they pretty much, them, them brothers couldn't even get a chance to eat. They like, damn, you know. So this is verse 21. And when his friends heard of it, these are his friends going into his family. And when his family, his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him. For they said, he is beside himself. This was the mindset of the people that knew him. His friends, his family, his relatives, those that really didn't believe. All right. And the same spirit is about to get put on people that you might work with, people that you know, your family members, your friends. This is going to be the spirit that is going to be on them because it happened to our Lord Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai clearly said, if it happened unto me, it's going to also happen unto you. So it says, for they said, he is beside himself. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, he hath Beelzebub, which is the Lord of flies. And by the prince of devils casteth he out devils. All right. So they the reason why they use Beelzebub as the entity that. That was being used to to, 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 um, to do those miracles because Yahweh Shai was healing people. All right. And back in the ancient world, you had a lot of wicked Israelites that was worshiping these other gods. And one of the gods, Beelzebub, was, was a healing god. Not only was he just the Lord of Flies, but he was a healing god. And ancient practices that people did, if they had a bacteria on them or an open cut, they would have put maggots on that open cut because the maggots eat that bacteria and they use that for healing. 
All right. So with Yahweh Shai doing those healings, they said, man, that ain't this ain't of God. It's Beelzebub, man. All right. Because he was doing those healings. And then they went further to say he was casting out those demons, you know, by the power of Satan. This is on the spirit that was on not even the scribes and Pharisees, but also on his friends and his family. That's why they went up to lay hold on him. All right. And just as it happened to Yahweh Shai, it's going to happen to you. When these miracles start happening, when these things are done, they're going to look and say, no, nah, man, this is this is of Satan. You know, this is verse 23. And he called them unto him and said unto them in the parable, how can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And that's also also what we're seeing here in America. This kingdom divided against itself. It's not going to stand. Everything's divided. OK, nobody's in one here in America. You even have two Demo you even have two uh, parties, Democrats and Republicans. All right. This is verse 25. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. Now check this out. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind a strong man and he will spoil his house. All right. Now, again, I wanted to read that example going into what Yahweh Shai was doing and how his family, his friends, those that were so-called close to him, came to him and they laid hold of him due to what he was doing. All right. And we're coming into that same stead. And that's why Yahweh Shai later on, it says his family came up to him, his mother and his brother and everything. And that's why he made that declaration. For who is my, my, my father, my mother, my brother? Them that do the will of the father. And we're really going to have to apply this mindset and utilize this in these times that's coming. That's part of the knowledge and wisdom being the stability of our times is knowing our true friends. Knowing, that are truly, knowing them that are truly close to us. Those that are in the name of Yahweh Shai. Those are the true relatives. But that's why Yahweh Shai made that statement because his family members, his friends came to lay hold on him when he was doing those miracles. When those things was taking place. All right. So when they see that you're completely against this society and this society is pushing, if you're against me, you're against God. And these people believe that they're with God, which is really Satan. They're going to come against us. All right. It's going to be the true and living God who we worship versus their God and who they worship. Now, obviously, our God is going to stand victorious. We already got the victory, but we're coming into that time right now where these people are going to try to come against us thinking that they're doing the most high of favor. All right. Which is really Satan that they after Satan that they're mindful about. You know, that's why the best thing for us to do right now is really just to agree with our adversaries and just be prudent, be wise, man, because we're coming into a time where they're going to want to take us to the judge, the officers like Yahweh Shai said in the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter. Okay. So we're coming into that time. So be mindful, be watchful and be prudent. Okay. So, hey, Lord's word, this is edifying. I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahashem, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechak Wadash, and the Holy Spirit. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace, blessing, and many salutations unto you elect across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. Shalom.